The roaring of dozens of Raptor engines sounds great, right? But wait, as you can see, there's one engine that has suddenly shut down. So, what happened to SpaceX's Raptor? Does this spell out big trouble for Elon and SpaceX? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Rocket engines are the heroes of every space exploration journey, serving as the propulsion force to propel spacecraft beyond Earth's atmosphere. Their significance lies in their ability to generate the immense thrust needed for liftoff and their precision and reliability throughout the mission. Therefore, having a powerful and efficient operating engine for their vehicles is crucial. SpaceX is a company that highly values this aspect. They have opted to build the most powerful engines for the largest rocket ever constructed, the Raptor engine for the Starship. However, achieving flawless operation for the Raptor as desired by SpaceX has not entirely been straightforward. In the latest launch of Starship, while the result was a major success for all of us and SpaceX when they achieved the landing goals set beforehand, the downside of this success is a gap in the operation of the Raptor engine, which causes some concern. Right from the moment Starship ignited and lifted off, the graphics displayed at the bottom left corner of the screen showed an outer ring engine shutting down at the fifth second. SpaceX did not mention this issue, but we can propose some plausible reasons. First off, let's review some problems of the engine in previous Starship launches. After the first launch, SpaceX quickly investigated and identified the root cause of the issue with multiple Raptor engines shutting down in the flight. Key components involved in the issue includes the manifold system, fuel pump, hot gas duct, hydraulic power unit, and ignition system. These parts could not withstand the harsh operating conditions of the engine, leading to fuel leaks, engine shutdowns, and uneven ignition. Additionally, issues were also related to the hydraulic power unit and ignition system not working properly, preventing some engines from starting during the liftoff phase. To address this problem, SpaceX improved the engine design. The manifold system, pump, and hot gas duct were enhanced with better heat-resistant and insulated materials that prevent cracking and leaks. The old hydraulic power unit was replaced with a new electric TVC system, enhancing engine control and reliability. Finally, the ignition system was also updated to ensure even and full ignition for all engines. This led to successful results in SpaceX's Starship Flight 2 and Flight 3, where they completely resolved the engine fail issue right at liftoff. Therefore, we can confidently say that in the fourth flight of Starship, the shutdown of the Raptor engine was certainly not related to the engine's design, but likely due to another reason, with the biggest suspicion being the fuel supply to the engine during launch. Although previously SpaceX stated they had made hardware changes to address the blockage issue for the fourth test flight of Starship, it seems this has not been completely resolved. This indicates that SpaceX's Raptor engine has still not proven its reliability. However, it must be affirmed that the fourth flight of Starship was very successful. The engines burned brilliantly, creating a rare diamond exhaust plume. The operations of shutting down and relighting the engine clusters for Super Heavy's return to Earth were excellent. The shutdown of one engine could be an isolated cause due to filter blockage where liquid oxygen flows into the Raptor engine, and it doesn't significantly impact the Starship flight. This is one of the advantages of SpaceX using dozens of engines for its rockets instead of just a few larger engines. Regardless, neither we nor SpaceX want troubles with the Raptor engine in the future. Rocket engines are quite complex, and even small issues can disrupt the entire process that follows. Fortunately for Starship, this time the Raptor engine that shut down was in the outer ring of the booster, operating only during the initial phase of lifting the Starship into orbit. Worst case scenario where an inner engine shuts down, it would result in the failure of the reignition mission. Surely you already know what the result will be after that. From the issues with the Raptor engine, we can see that while the engine itself is a complex engineering feat, making the engine burn normally and stably is even more complex. The engine can shut down at any time or even fail to ignite if the necessary conditions are not met during ignition. So, why are rocket engines so difficult to ignite like that? This varies greatly between engine types. As a general rule of thumb, the more complicated the rocket engine, the harder it is to relight. The only exception to this rule is solid rocket engines that can't be shut off in any practical way once they started going. Firstly, it's essential to note that a rocket engine needs the same pressure going into the combustion chamber as there is leaving the combustion chamber through the nozzle, or the combusting gases will just flow back into the tanks, which you can probably guess is not good. This is where 95% of the complexity of rocket engines comes from. How do I get the fuel up to the right pressure in the most efficient way? There are rocket engines that are extremely simple to start, as simple as turning a valve or two. 
These are pressure-fed monopropellant engines, typically used on reaction control systems for fine maneuvers in space. And they're so easy to start because they're nothing more than a pressurized tank or two or a valve and a nozzle. Turn the valve and the pressurized gas flows out, generating thrust. They're called pressure-fed because the fuel's already at the same pressure inside the tank as there'll be going into the nozzle, so you don't need any pumps. Pressure-fed engines can get more efficient if you pick fuels that can decompose, like hydrogen peroxide, and in turn generate heat. In terms of complexity, it's still practically the same thing, just now with a combustion chamber between the valve and the nozzle. If you want to get even more efficient, you can use bipropellant engines that can take advantage of a property of hypergolic fuels. Essentially, a hypergolic mixture is a mix of two gases that instantly combust when they meet, meaning you don't need any igniters. Open the valve and the engine burns. It starts getting difficult when you leave the realm of pressure-fed engines. The problem is that pressure-fed engines are limited by how much pressure you can have in the tanks, which isn't a lot when you consider the tanks need to be as light as possible. The alternative is to use a pump to get the fuel up to pressure. This has been done in endless different ways throughout the history of spaceflight and is overwhelmingly the most expensive part of an engine to develop every single time. It's also the reason why most of rocket engines are so hard to start. How does SpaceX ignite its rocket engines? SpaceX uses hypergolic fuels like TEA-TEB, a mixture of triethyl aluminum and triethyl boron, to ignite its engines. For instance, SpaceX's Falcon 9 uses TEA-TEB to ignite the Merlin engines. When oxygen starts flowing in, TEA-TEB spontaneously ignites, initiating the combustion process of the engine. This method has the advantages of being lightweight and highly reliable, but it also has the drawbacks of being costly and needing to be reloaded after each flight. SpaceX's new Raptor engine employs a different method, using a torch igniter system known as an augmented spark igniter, similar to a lighter used for lighting candles. It uses a smaller igniter that then feeds methyl ox to keep the torch burning. This essentially functions like a mini rocket engine ignited by the igniter. The torch continues burning throughout the entire startup process. This process is used to ignite both pre-burners of the Raptor engine, not the main combustion chamber or MCC. In fact, the MCC itself does not have an igniter. Although in an interview with Everyday Astronaut, Elon Musk was very secretive about how they ignite the MCC. It's believed SpaceX is moving away from homogeneous ignition, the spontaneous combustion process where methane and oxygen come in contact with each other. Raptor can avoid this because it's a full-flow stage combustion engine, meaning both propellants enter the MCC as hot gases. The development of the Raptor engine has provided SpaceX with valuable lessons on startup, throttling, and shutdown phases. Specifically, adjusting the rates of the fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich pre-burners directly affects each other, adding to the complexity. As a result, SpaceX has conducted thousands of tests to address arising issues. Overall, rocket engine ignition is a field that requires careful consideration and continuous experimentation. With ongoing innovation, technology will continue to advance, providing safer, more efficient, and reliable solutions for the future of the space industry. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.